Hi everybody, welcome to another episode of Historia Politica Publica. In the episode of today, I will talk about a book that I have read recently. It's called Miss Born, The Final Empire. It's one of the famous novels written by Brandon Sanderson. This is the first one of the trilogy, which uh, has the other books named The Well of Ascension and The Hero of Ages. I will talk about the first one. I won't do too much spoilers, especially about the ending, which is tragic, is incredible, and in that sense I want to analyze this book, comparing it with some of the social revolutions that happened in previous centuries. More in particular with the French Revolution, which I think it influenced clearly the history written by Brandon Sanderson. Well, just to start, I will say that Miss Born, which is the name of the trilogy, starts on a dystopian world of Scadrial, in which the ash constantly falls from the sky, all plants are brown, and supernatural mists cloak the landscape every night. In other words, this is a miserable world in which you can see clearly the different classes and how those who are on top of subjugating those uh, below it. This is not a capitalist society uh, in the proper sense, it's more a kind of feudalistic regime. The one that it was uh, common in the Europe of the 19th and 18th century. The absolute monarch in this story is the Lord Ruler. The Lord Ruler uh, carried a, a revolution like 1000 years ago when he went to the, the well of a the Ascension Well, which is uh, the name of the second book, and he acquired all the power of the Lord Ruler. With that power, he was able to change the landscape of the region and also to stratify the different classes that were there. In that sense, the society in which the action of Miss Born is carried on, it is divided between the nobility, you have also the clergy, and the ska. The ska are the most important characters in the book, and I think one of the interesting aspects of this story is that the main characters are ska in themselves. So I was thinking about Game of Thrones, how the, the whole story is written through the eyes of the upper classes, let's say the, the nobility, even though we obviously tend to have more sympathy for the Stark family than others, but at the end they are the, the lords of Winterfell. And it is precisely people like Jon Snow or Arya or Samuel Tarly, which uh, tend to be more, 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 more sympathetic for, for the public because there, I, there are outsiders in their own house and therefore they need to, to find the, the place outside there. The humans, naturally, we tend to side with the underdog and for that reason this book is particularly interesting because, again, the Ska are the main uh, characters. Within the Ska we have people like Kelsier, Bean, Hammond, uh, those characters who are develop developing interesting relations within this story and which their main aim is to overthrow the tyrannical Lord Ruler. In, the, in this story, most of the action is focused on Luthadel. Luthadel is the capital of the final empire. Here you have Ska working in the uh, workplaces under miserable conditions, but at the same time the Lord Ruler is smart. He needs the production working on, so he gives the Ska enough food to keep living and working on. In that sense we can uh, see a difference between the people living in Luthadel and the people living outside. Outside Luthadel it is true that the regime is clearly feudalistic, you have the, the nobility there uh, overlooking the different plantations where the Ska are working, they harvest the fields, they are uh, collecting uh, vegetables, fruits and so on, and what is happening there 
is that when in the nights the mist covers the whole region, something that happened after the Lord Ruler took the power a thousand years ago, they are scared and they stay in their houses. For that reason, the first chapter is very uh, fundamental to comprehend the, the whole of the story. The first chapter is based precisely in one of those plantations in which you see a uh, a member of the nobility, you have also one of the main allies of the Lord Ruler, which are those people who are are kind of uh, taking care that everything is going on well in the empire, those kind of bureaucrats that are fundamental to the well-functioning of any economic system, being capitalist, communist, feudalistic or so. So in this feudal regime, Kelsier, which even though he's not the main character of the story, that honor corresponds to Bean, Kelsier is perhaps the most char charismatic figure and the one that surely will attain the most interest of the, the readers. Why so? Well, Kelsier is a ska, which was in love with a woman. They were captive, captured by the uh, Lord, Rule, Lord Ruler um, allies, and in that sense, they were sent to the Hudson Well to die. Uh, his wife was killed, and Kelsier was going to die himself in the well, but when he was there, he achieved miraculously some kind of spectacular powers which made him escape from the from his uh, death he become a misborn misborn is those people who have special powers in that story the most important kind of magic is the one that uh, it is created through allomancy which allows users to gain supernatural abilities by swallowing and burning specific metals the allomantic potential is a genetic trait concentrated in the nobility, something that when the Lord Ruler became powerful 1000 years ago, he provided them with these special powers to uh, remain their, their status and perpetrate the kind of tyrannical rule that the Lord Ruler had just instigated. The thing is, there are many ska which are allomancer, and this is because during thousands of during a thousand of years, there has been a crossbreeding between the nobility and the ska. In that sense, the nobility treat the ska as mere um, subjects, less than animals. They kill them just for fun. They rape the woman, and for that reason, there has been people who has been born from ska bl uh, blood, which has those kind of powers. Normal Alomancer have access to one Alomantic power, but an incredible rare subset of Alomancer, this called Mistborn, have access to every Alomantic power. Kelsier gets the power in the well of uh, Hudson and become one of the most powerful Mistborn in the age. In later years, he meets Bean, which uh, accordingly sees also a Mistborn and start to release her supernatural power during the first book. In that sense, Bean, which is part of a group of thieves, which main aim is to survive, she experienced gender violence. Uh, in the group, they are most of them male, so her life is miserable. Her brother abandoned her, her mother died. So it's basically, she's just alone with herself, with Kamon, which is the leader of the thieves. But very soon in the book, Kelsier will find her, will liberate her, and will introduce her to their to his comrades, which are integrated by people like Mars, Kelsier's brother, Clubs, Dogson, Hammond, um, Breeze, which is Edgar Ladrian, and many others. Jeden, which is the leader of SCAP. What this group of people are planning is to overthrow the final empire. This obviously seemed an utopian idea. It was firstly thought by Kelsier and he started to convince his comrades in order to achieve this thing. 
They have very interesting and philosophical conversations with Khan, have many reminiscences with the French Revolution or even the Russian Revolution, although I think the, there are more uh, clear influence with the first one. An important idea here is the alienation of the ska. The ska obviously are much more numerous than the nobility uh, in the final empire, but because they lack cohesion, they are alienated from themselves they are unable to join together and to plan a revolution. There has been some attempts in the last hundreds of years, but some, most of them has been uh, unplanned and they have been easily destroyed by the Lord Ruler and his allies, which among their allies, there are the Inquisitors, which are uh, humans, which has special powers and they are very difficult to defeat. Apart from that, um, Kelsier and, their, and his comrades of the group, they, they elaborate such a thoroughly plan to overthrow the regime, the prevalent regime, that everybody seems to get along with that. Obviously, everybody thinks at the beginning that it's a mad plan, that Kelsier has come very... Uh, change from the well of Hudson when he lost his wife and attained the powers but at the same time they know that their life are so miserable that they won't lose anything but their chains as Frederick Engels and Karl Marx put it in their communist manifesto so well they will try and if they died anyway their life wasn't wasn't worth living anyway so during this book you have all this kind of uh, strategy to uh, restore or implement a democratic regime in Luthadel and in, in the whole final empire. So it is interesting how the relations in these books are developing. I particularly, I am particularly fond of the relation between Bean and Kelsier because I think, or initially they are, they have different personalities within the material and social conditions that they have been living until that moment. First of all, Bean is very cynic character, she doesn't believe in human beings, she thinks that everybody will uh, betray you at the right moment, and she has her voice of conscience that is speaking through the, the whole of the first book, pointing to her that she, doesn't, she has not to tr uh, trust anybody. In fact, uh, her brother Rin abandon her, so she doesn't have anybody and she's just a survival, an individualist kind of survival, a kind of figure of a neoliberal person which will tell you that a, every human being is selfish, is greedy and you only need to think about yourself. By contrast, Kels here is more this kind of anarchist, communist person who believe on the uh, importance of the ska, the, their bravery, their willingness to act only if they are able to be told that there is hope. Hope is the clear uh, concept, in my opinion, in this book about Kelsier. For him, it is more, and this will, this we will see, especially in the later part of the book, that restoring or overthrowing Lord Ruler a joke it is um government is not the only aim by itself but it's important to create a consciousness among the ska in order to show them how it is possible to change the existing regime so in other words it is not just the end in itself but also the means to achieve that end in other words kelsier wants a society in which the ska are free in order to pursue their own interest and think about everybody in a society in which there will be egalitarianism and won't be anybody above anybody. So the stratification of society created by the Lord Ruler will disappear. Obviously, Bean finds this utopian, unrealistic and so on. But through the book, it is interesting how the voice of the consciousness of Bean is being silenced, is not talking anymore as long as she continues with Kelsier, Hammond, Dogson, and the other comrades. Another important aspect of this book, and which makes it clear the 
the, 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 the ideology of, of Brandon Sanderson, which, by the way, told some years ago that he voted for Bernie Sanders, which is, the, you know, the candidate of the Democratic Party who declared himself a, a, a socialist. And one of these characters is Ellen, Ellen Venture. Ellen Venture is a nobleman and the heir to House Venture, which is the most powerful house in Luthadel. But he's one of the few novels who wishes for societal reform in the final empire. He's even defined by other novels as an anarchist. He often breaks from traditional novel cultural standards. He studied so much with his uh, friends. So, in other words, he's the, the intellectual figure who, even though he lives in the opulence of the upper classes and obviously through this uh, current system, his uh, social class is benefiting from the uh, uh, rule of the Lord Ruler, he wants a change. So he will ally with Bean and uh, her comrades. You will have here a conflict because Kelsier, in spite of his benevolence and his willingness to change, he cannot uh, disguise a hate to the upper classes. But Ellen Venture, which is a figure which believes in Kelsier's ideas, eventually will change the mind of Kelsier. And I don't want to spoil any more about this book because I think it's very worth reading. It is a bit long, but the politics in this book is, is, is very, very in interesting. How, uh, as happened in the French Revolution, you have a, a class of intellectuals, the bourgeoisie, which wanted to make the revolution, but they were supported by the huge majority of the, the population in, in Paris. Paris, which obviously act as Luthadel in this book. And in that sense, you have the Ska, which are Kelsier, Breeze, Hammond, and, and this other, but within the Ska, those are those consider as more capable, those who had to spark the flame of revolution among the other ska, which eventually, even though they have been alienated through hundreds of years of repress, of terror, of the loss of hope, get in, in arms in order to overthrow the regime in Luthadel. This is a very important part of the story. So you have here the, the confluence between people like Kelsier, people like Bean, which it is, it, Bean is probably one of the lowest of the ska because he's also a woman and in this patriarchal society this obviously affects her possibilities. And Ellen Venture, you can form here a, a triangle and see how all together will try to destroy the uh, regime of the Lord Ruler and create a, a new society. And in other chapters, I will talk about the second book, which is very interesting because it is a completely different uh, approach to this idea of society. The first book, The Final Empire, in the trilogy of Mistborn, you can read as a kind of separate story. It has a beginning and end. Obviously, when you finish, I can guarantee you that you will want to know what happened next, but still it is a, a story that start and ends. Very interesting to read. The conversations between the characters are hugely insightful. The politics of the uh, written by Sanderson are realistic. The different ideas between social classes and so on, the, the, the class difference here is very, uh, very well preserved and I could not recommend you any more book of fantasy, which I think probably is one of the best that has been released in the last couple of decades.